Look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, you won't catch me lacking. Find somebody else and tell them, neighbor, you won't catch me lacking. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you for what you've already done in this service thus far, God. I thank you for speaking through me to your people, God. I'm nothing but a messenger up here, God. Remove everything about Isaiah and make everything about you, God. So somebody will leave here changed, Lord, and that someone will walk out of here understanding who they are and whose they are in you. And Lord Jesus, please help the Steelers right now. We are losing big to the Texans. In Jesus' name, what do we all say? Someone shout, you won't catch me lacking. Uh, by a show of hands, is anyone in this building or in this room or at the sound of my voice, if you've ever experienced lack before, go ahead and throw that hand up in the air. Anybody ever experienced, oh my goodness, that's everybody in the place. We've all experienced lack in our lives. I feel like as you grow up, and you get, to go, you get to doing things and you get to maturing and becoming a man or a woman that God has called you to be, you're going to go through seasons where you feel like you experience what we call lack. It could be lack in your bank account. It could be lack in your relationship. It can be lack in your marriage. It could be lack in the friendships that you're creating. But we all experience lack in one way or another. Uh, this past week, I had the opportunity to be able to uh, watch my baby girls. My wife was in Texas for four days with PK and Mariah. They were up there just preaching away. And my wife is not a preacher yet, but she up there just watching, amen. And, and so as she's up there just watching and supporting, I'm stuck back here with something called daddy duty. Somebody shout daddy duty. Um, it seems like every time I get on this stage, I'm just fresh off of daddy duty because that's just how much the Lord loves me. He said, let me put this man to work while he's working on these kids and trying to get them saved. Amen. Uh, my kids are not saved yet. We're going to pray. We're going to get them there. Uh, but with that being said, this past week uh, was interesting uh, from the standpoint of, of course, I'm in charge of uh, a five-year-old and a three-year-old. And uh, my five-year-old thinks she's 25 and my three-year-old thinks she's 30. So... Uh, I'm a little stressed out on this morning, but God is good, amen. Uh, but yesterday morning, something happened. I woke up and I made my daughter's breakfast and they love this cinnamon sugar toast with some eggs. Come on, that's old school. Anybody in here grow up eating that some cinnamon? If you ain't had nothing else, you got some toast, some bread, and I mean, you got some uh, a cinnamon sugar butter, you're good. So I make them some cinnamon sugar toast and I make them some eggs. Now, uh, I, I make their food, I get it hot, fresh out the skillet, fresh out the toaster, put it on a plate in front of them, sprinkle the cinnamon, sprinkle the sugar, rub it all in, make sure it's nice and right because they are picky children, amen? And so I make sure it's all nice where I got to cut the crust edges off, you know, they don't do edges of the crust. As I've gotten older, I actually appreciate the edges of the bread. I don't know about y'all, but it means something to me. Anyways, I cut those off, throw them away, I put the food in front of my daughters and I walk away to start cleaning up the kitchen. Any good man or woman of God should clean before they get sit down and eat their meal. And so I go and I get to washing the dishes and all of this sudden, both of my daughters are screaming at the top of their lungs. And I look at them and they're, they're crying and they're pointing at, at the bread and, and, I'm, I'm, and they're pointing at their tongue and they're saying, Daddy, it's hot. Daddy, it's hot. And I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? It's hot. Maybe y'all should have blew on them eggs before you ate them eggs. You saw the smoke. And they, they, they start pointing at the bread. No, daddy, not, not the eggs, the, the, the bread. And so I grab the bread and I'm looking at this beautiful cinnamon sugar toast that I just made and I take a bite of it. When I tell you my tongue was on fire for 25 minutes because I actually use cumin powder instead of cinnamon powder. Now, they got to decipher these, these, the cans that they come in, all right? They got the same color top. They look the same color. And I poured it all. Now, now Layla, she likes extra cinnamon. So, so her mouth was extra hot on yesterday morning. We're taking turns at the sink. I'm washing their mouths out with water. We're all chewing on ice. And the whole time, they're just saying stuff like, when's mommy coming home? And... Why did you do this to us? And what kind of daddy are you? And I'm leaving. I'm, uh, Jada grabs a, she grabs a suitcase, try to walk outside. And 
so I'm trying to calm my house down and get everybody, everybody back right. And, and so uh, I said, I'm going to fix this. So I went back in the kitchen, made sure I got the cinnamon, made sure I got the, the sugar. And I make them some more toast. And I made it really nice and good. And, and after the mouse cooled off, I said, here, baby, I made you guys some more toast. And both these girls looked at me and they're like, nah, we good. So I've lost the trust <laughs> of my children at the house. And it's so funny because I've already been prepping this message since about Monday, Tuesday. And the Lord gave me a revelation with that story. A lot of times in our lives, things can look like they're in order. Things can look as if we got it all together. Things can look as if it's all coming together. But when you take a bite or if you feel a little bit of some backlash in your life and you look at your life in the mirror, it seems like something is lacking. It seems like something is, is missing. Is anybody ever been there before? You got some good things going, but if that one more thing came through for me, it'd be really good. Or if, or if, if, if we, I just need two more things to get fixed in my life and, and things can be really good. And, and the enemy starts to convince us that we live a life that is full of lack or a life that is full of strife and a life that is full of, of, of struggles. But how many of us know the devil is a liar? I believe that we serve a God that breaks the back of lack in our lives, that he has called us to be more than conquerors. Someone shout, I'm a conqueror. He's called us to be more than conquerors in our life through Christ Jesus. So although the toast or whatever you've got in your life may look good, I'm here to tell you if something's missing or something's lacking in your life, we can fix that on today. And the only way we can fix that is with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, the enemy loves to remind us exactly of what it is that we're missing. Maybe your bank account isn't where you want it to be right now. Maybe you wish your husband treated you a little better or your wife gave you a little more attention or your kids would start coming to church and acting all rebellious or you could kick that addiction or get rid of the anxiety that you feel every single morning when you wake up out of your bed and it feels as if you're lacking something. I'm here today to tell you that Jesus has everything that you need, that he is the answer to every single problem that you have, that he is here to make sure that you live a full life. Someone shout full. He wants you to live a full life. And so what the enemy does is he'll remind us of things that we're lacking and we're missing in our life. And it begins to rob us of our joy and of, and of our peace and of our hope. But uh, I believe that the enemy, even in itself, the Bible in John 10, 10, it says that the enemy comes like, uh, uh, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And you might be wondering, what is he coming to steal, kill, and destroy? It's not just your help, but he knows if he can take your peace, he wins. If he can take your joy, he wins. If he can take your hope, he wins. But the devil is a liar because that's a free gift from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just like he gave me grace and mercy every single morning, I thank him for the hope that he gives me. I thank him for the the, the the joy that he gives me. I thank him for the help that he gives me. I thank him for allowing me to continue to live this thing called life. And I can look in the face of lack and look in the face of things that I'm missing and still proclaim that Jesus is Lord and still proclaim that he is my provider and still proclaim that he is my healer and still proclaim that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And whatever it is I'm going through right now is not unto death, but I have a father that loves me enough that he will bring the dead things in my life back to life. Oh, do I I have anybody in this building that has been through some things. Maybe you've seen some things. Maybe you've gone through some things. But listen, I'm glad that you're here on today because it tells me one thing, that you are a survivor. Come on, do I have any survivors in this place? Oh, it's one thing to survive, but I believe that God is about to take us to another level and it's called thriving in your walk with Jesus. It's called thriving in your business. It's called thriving in your relationships. It's called thriving in your marriage. God is about to allow a thrive anointing to come into your house. So stop focusing on the lack. Stop focusing on what you don't have. Stop focusing on the sickness. Stop focusing on the diagnosis because God is about to provide something big in your life. Somebody shout big in this place. He's going to provide something big in this place. So if you're in this room and you're in a season of lack, if you're in the season of like I'm talking to you on today because God is about to turn it around. Someone shout, he's turning it around. He's turning it 
around. We've got to learn to refuse to join in on certain situations that appear in our life. I don't know about y'all, but they were talking a couple weeks ago about a new pandemic that's coming, and we've got to mask up again, and we're going to shut down. Listen, I don't know about you, but I refuse to participate in this next one. I refuse to participate it. Just like I refuse to participate in the recession back in the day. Just like I refuse to participate in the diagnosis they tried to give my daughter when she was born. I refuse to participate in it because sometimes the things that you entertain are the very things that come true in your life. So when things come up in your life and drama comes up in your life, the more you feed it, the bigger it will grow. I don't know about you, but I want some believers that are willing to starve the attacks of the enemy. Don't give it any type of fuel. Don't give it any type of attention. It's, it's time for us to start starving what the enemy wants to do bad to you. And the way to starve it is by proclaiming your faith, by lifting up your mouth and open up your mouth and giving God praise and saying, Lord, I trust you even when I can't trace you. Lord, I trust you even when I'm hurting. Lord God, I trust you even though I feel like you're not with me right now. I'm going to trust you anyway. And then when he shows up, when like a knight in shining armor, when he shows up in your situation, you'll be able to throw your head back and lift those hands up and said, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? A thousand may fall on my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come nigh unto me. And if you won't praise him for yourself, you might as well praise him for your children. If you won't praise him for your children, you might as well praise him for your grandchildren. And if you won't praise him for your grandchildren, you better praise him for your great, great, great grandchildren because God is about to do something big through you and your next generations are going to be affected. The next generation that you're about to birth is going to be affected based off of your praise, based off of your trust, based off of your relationship. Someone shout, I'm a trailblazer. You're a trailblazer. And so today what I want to talk about is three ways to combat lack in your life. Someone shout, you won't catch me lacking. You won't catch me lacking. Number one, stop focusing on what you don't have. Stop focusing on what you don't have. Look at your neighbor and say, that's for you. Stop focusing on what you don't have. The first temptation in the history of the world was to focus on lack. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 2, way in the beginning of the Bible, way at the very beginning. Jesus had just created the, the heavens and the earth and everything, and Adam and Eve is rolling around in the, dar- in the, in the garden. And it says in Genesis 2, verse 9, the Lord, gave, the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now we're going to go to chapter 3, verse 1. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from that tree that is in the middle of the garden and and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse 4, it says, you will certainly not die, the serpent said to the women. Now we're going to skip verse 5. We're going to go right to verse number 6. It says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. And she also gave her some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. And, and then their eyes, both, were, both of them were open and they realized they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings. For themselves. If you look at chapter two, it says that the tree was in the middle of the garden. The tree was in the middle of the garden of Eden, which means as Eve is being led by this serpent to go partake of this tree that's in the middle of the garden, that means she had to walk past trees with oranges and trees with apples and trees with pears and and you've got grapes hanging from trees and bananas in the trees and she had to walk past everything that she had to get to the one thing that she lacked. How many of us have been guilty of that in our personal lives where sometimes we can walk past all the abundance that the Lord has done for us and provided for us because we're focused on what it is that you're lacking in your personal life. 
When I think of this, I think a couple weeks ago, my, my, my parents called me up and they said, hey, we want to take the girls to go get ice cream. I said, yes, Lord, come. They're waiting outside the door. <laughs> and they said, we want to take them for ice cream. We're going to bring them right back. I'm like, cool, that's awesome. So something interesting happened when they came back about an hour later. The girls were happy and excited. Uh, my, my, my mother tells me, listen, um, I didn't know Jada liked chocolate ice cream so much. And I'm like, listen, she's a little chocolate girl. She loves everything chocolate. She's, a, she's, a, she's, she's probably because her daddy chocolate. I don't know. And, and she tells me, yeah, we were in the ice cream line, and I got four vanilla cones for your daughters and the twins. And, and, and Jada, the baby, started throwing a fit when we gave her her ice cream cone because she wanted chocolate. And, and, and she goes, Isaiah, she was throwing such a fit that we had to turn around and get back in the line to get her vanilla ice or chocolate ice cream. I said, y'all done got soft. <laughs> See, I grew up in a dispensation with my parents. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. That's how I grew up. So it wasn't gonna be no turning around for Isaiah or Mariah or Stella or all of a sudden Papa and Gigi, oh, let's just turn around for the baby. I didn't experience that. Listen, we didn't experience that growing up. Listen, your parents was like, listen, you gonna get what you get. I don't, if, oh, don't drop your cone. Well, you dropped it. There's ice cream in the freezer at home. It's, 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 it's messed up though, it's dry ice, but I mean. <laughs> they turned around for my baby to get her what she wanted and they said when they gave her that chocolate cone, she said thank you, threw the vanilla cone out the window and kept eating her chocolate ice cream. I said, ain't that just like us as adults at times? Sometimes just, be, just be, when you have something and it's not exactly what you want, we'll complain and we'll throw a fit. And, and, and yeah, I have a car, but I wish it was a Maserati. Yeah, you know, yeah I have a house. It's a one story, but I wish I had a two story. Yeah, I, I have an apartment and it's all right, but I mean, I wish I, wish I had a condo overlooking the city. I, yeah, I have a wife, but I wish she was cuter. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I have a husband, but man, he gaining weight, boy. He need to put them po' boys down. But we'll have things in our life that looks like the substance of what we want, but because it's not the right flavor, we throw a fit. And before you know it, you focus on what it is that you're lacking and not what God already brought you. The, the abundance that God is. Listen, I don't know about you, but I, I know it's not a Maserati right now, but you better thank God for that Corolla you got parked out there right now. Because I grew up in a church where they say, if you be faithful over a little, he will make you ruler over many. So you better vacuum and clean it and you better clean. I know they're not, they, they tins, but you better keep them rims clean and you better make sure that that apartment that you're living in, you better vacuum that thing. You better have some lines in that carpet. Listen, did anybody grow up like that? I grew up where we, if, you, if they didn't have lines in your carpet, did you really even vacuum? Did you gotta, you gotta unplug and start back over? You better put some lines in my carpet. Someone shout, put some lines in my carpet. Listen, when I walk in your house and I know it's, uh, I know it's old and it's raggedy and it's not what you want but your house better smell like the mansion that God is about to move you into your house better look like what it's going to resemble in the future because I don't know about you but I believe that the Lord loves us so much the Bible says that he owns a cattle on a thousand hills and yeah I may not be where I want to be right now but listen just wait till you see where the Lord has taken me in the next couple years people are going to see you in the next five years and not even be able to recognize you people are going to see you in the next five years and not even realize how much money you are making people are going to see you in the next five years and they can't believe what neighborhood you live in people are going to see you in the next five years and they can't believe all your kids are in church people are going to see you in the next five years and they can't believe what kind of car you driving and it's not because of all the things that you want it's because of the lord that you serve it's because of the god that you serve he loves you so much that he's willing to do some things he's willing to break the back of lack in your life all you got to do is remain consistent keep on going after Jesus and stop complaining about what you don't have. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not a complainer anymore. I'm not a complainer anymore. Find somebody else and tell them, I'm not a complainer anymore. I'm not a complainer anymore. 
Jesus is saying all the things I provided, the car accident that I prevented, the, the cancer that you didn't even know about that I killed at the root, uh, the, the, the check that showed up when you didn't know how you were going to pay the rent on that month, the bullets that missed you, that, that you heard whiz by your head, but you're still here to say, I serve a God that loves me. I serve a God that is on me. I serve a God that will continue to allow me to walk in authority on earth. All the things that he's provided for you, how dare you even sit back and think about the things that you lack. God is has got your back he's about to make the crooked way straight in your life just sit back and relax in the middle of it because it is not unto death it's not unto death it's not unto death yeah i know it's not the job that you want but the job is coming you gotta just call it speak it into existence i don't know about y'all but this is a speak it into existence type of church listen they don't talk about it a lot in the new church but i believe if you say some things you will see some things that's why we say it every sunday on the screen that's not just words that's bible i believe that when you say it you will you'll see it god's about to do some big things He's about to do some, oh, I can feel the anointing. He's about to do some big things in your life because he loves you that much. And guess what? You don't deserve it. You don't deserve it, but he's going to give it to you anyway. Because the Bible says we were made in his image and in his likeness. And the Bible also says he'll reign on the just and the unjust. God's about to do something big. Someone shout big. big. He's going to do something big in your life. So number one, you got to stop focusing on what you don't have. Number two, you need to speak death to your lack. Somebody, somebody shout speak death to it. You've got to speak death to your lack. In Mark chapter 11, verse 23, it says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that they will what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Someone shout, it's mine. It's mine. You got to believe that when you say that. You got to start to speak death to things in your life that are unwanted. You got to start speaking death to situations in your life that you feel like need to be dried up. You can speak to these things and they can happen. It says it right here in the scripture that you can say to this mountain, go and be thrown into the sea. I don't know about y'all, but I've experienced some things where it felt like some mountains were in my life. And in those mountains was mountain lions and rattlesnakes and scorpions. But whenever I said go and be tossed into the sea, it has to be gone. Speaking death to your lack. If you don't know the Steele family story, I'll, I'll fill you in really quick. We grow up po. We was po, not P-O-O-R. We was P-O. We was po. We didn't have a whole lot. We have a lot of things going on. I remember going back to school, same backpack from last year. You know, mom would just justify it. It was only four months ago. You know, uh, uh, we, would, we grew up sharing burgers and all these different things. You've heard our stories over the years, but there's one specific story I never told you guys. But we, 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 we started Kingdom in the Valley back in 2005. And as we started the church, uh, our money still wasn't touching in the grand. Mom and dad were putting everything into this, into this ministry. It was everything. Everything that we have was going into this church that we were having in the swap meeting. I remember one Wednesday night, it was after midweek service, we got done with church and uh, on our way home, uh, we decided we're going to stop at Jack in the Box. Do I got any Jack in the Box fans in here? We don't know what's in them tacos, but they good, ain't they? I don't, I don't know what it is, that mystery meat boy, something about it. Anyway, uh, we, we go to Jack in the Box and, and as we pull up the Jack in the Box, um, I grew up in a family where kids don't order their food. <laughs> The parents order for everybody in the car. And so uh, if, that's, if that's not you, you must be doing real good. <laughs> but uh, I didn't order my first meal until I was 18. Uh, anyway, um, we go to Jack in a Box and we order uh, uh, about 20 tacos for everybody, a couple, a Jumbo Jack for my dad. My daddy, my daddy loved Jumbo Jacks. Um, and, and probably like three, four things of fries. And, and uh, the total came out to, I don't know, 30 bucks or whatever it may be. And, and uh, they, you know, as soon as we get to the window, this is the dispensation when they gave you the bag first before they took your money. 
So they give us the bag, and the bag's in the car. Now, as soon as the bag in the car, it is, uh, it is you have to test a, a French fry or two out just to make sure that they did it right. And so as soon as the bag got into the back seat, boy, Isaac, Ira, Stella, Mariah, myself, boy, we went in on them fries. We, we tearing the fries up while we're still waiting for them to give my father his debit card back. When I told you the fear struck in my body when I heard my dad said, hey, Give me that bag. And I looked and was like, oh, he wants some fries. You know, like, I'm still eating. <laughs> you know, I'm still eating my fries. And, and I see him hand it back to the lady. And I look at him. I go, what, what, did they forget something? Like, they, they giving us more fries? Because they, they was good. You know, Ira back there got salt and ketchup on his mouth, you know. <laughs> and, and he goes, my card got declined. And I said, well, ain't that something? The card got declined and they took the food back. Kid you not, true story, you can ask Mariah, she's sitting right here. As we went to pull out with no food, we're driving and turning the corner, our car breaks down. Car completely stops, dead. Oh, I, everything is the alternator shot. And I had to get out the car with my brothers and we had to push this van that we had into a parking spot in the same jack in the box that just saw us get declined. Y'all know how embarrassing this was? The fact that they just saw us get declined and then the car breaks down. I know they was thinking, oh, they can't fix that. If they can't buy Jack in the Box, they can't fix that car. And we parked it right there. And I'll never forget, my mom got out the car and she was frustrated and she sat on the front of the hood and she just started to cry. She started to cry. And my dad walked over to my mother and, she, and he says, baby, it won't always be like this. Just like that, I remember it clear as day. He said, baby, it won't always be like this. And when he said that, my mind went back to two other situations. There was a Mother's Day about two years prior where he couldn't afford anything for my mother, but they went to McDonald's on a date and he told her, and well, the, while they were sharing that Big Mac, it won't always be like this. When I was nine years old and I just got done playing football and, and I was going into my next season and, and he couldn't afford to put me in, he looked at me and he said, Isaiah, it won't always be like this. And so at 13 years old, when I was in that jack in the box line, I sat there and I cried out to the Lord and I'm thinking, Lord, when is it going to happen for us? We're in church, we're serving, we're, we're tithing when we, don't, we can't afford to tithe. Couldn't afford it, but did it anyway, just being obedient. We're doing all the things, Lord. When are you going to show up? And then I just started seeing God peel back the layers of poverty off of my family's life. He started just peeling back the different things that we experienced. And, 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 and we, we ended up having, there was two cars in the house, and we didn't have to ride on each other's laps no more to get the places. And the AC worked in the cars, praise the Lord. And, and then we moved to a house, and, and then we moved to a house that had a pool. And, and I'm sitting there watching this whole testimony come to fruition because, and you gotta remember, I grew up po. And all I could think about was my father saying, it won't always be like this. I tell you that story to encourage you on today. You've got to have it. It won't always be like this type of mentality. When you look at your bank account in the morning and it doesn't look like what you want it to look like, just say, Lord, I know it won't always be like this. If your kids is going crazy and driving you crazy and doing the wrong things, you need to just have that mentality. Lord, I know it won't always be like this. If you and your wife cannot stop arguing and you want to yell and go crazy, you need to have the mentality that it won't always be like this because if the Lord did it for the steals, I believe he can do it for the Johnsons and the Wilsons and the Williams because, listen, we are not special people. We just serve a special God, and he loves us so much that he's willing to break the back of lack in your life. All he's requiring is for you to be consistent, keep on coming to church, keep on praising God, keep on giving offering, keep on serving in your church, keep on proclaiming him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he's going to rain a harvest in your life. Someone shout, you won't catch me lacking. You won't catch me lacking. Proverbs 18, verse 21, it says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. You've got to speak death to lack and life to prosperity.
You've got to speak death to hard times and life to abundance. You've got to speak death to drama and life to peace in your life. You've got to speak death to sickness and speak life to health that is coming in your life. It's all about saying it. Saying it, understanding that it's important that we can speak it and say, listen, I know that things aren't where I want to be, but Lord, I can't wait to see where I'm going. Come on, is that a word for anybody? And I know I'm not where I want to be right now. Maybe in my relationship or maybe at my, at, at my address, but Lord, I cannot wait to see what you're going to do in my future. Someone shout, you won't catch me lacking. You will not catch me lacking. And number three, as we close, number three, uh, you've got to understand that your worship is a weapon. Your worship is a weapon. Um, when I'm thinking of this and as I'm studying, the Lord drops Jehoshaphat in my spirit. And if you don't know who Jehoshaphat was, he was an army general, but he was a powerful man of God. He, he fought by faith. He was, he was, he was that man. He was a, a pastor and a general of an army. And, and it gets to a point where all these people want him dead. The, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Menunites, listen, the, J, the GDs, the Bloods, the Crips, the Vice Lords, everybody wanted him dead. Everyone wanted Jehosha Jehoshaphat gone. And something happens in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I want to talk about, remember, we're talking about worship is a weapon. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20, it says, early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. And as they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. Someone shout, I'm successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And as they began to sing and, and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who were invading Judah. And they were defeated. They were defeated. When, when I came up with the title of this message, uh, you won't catch me lacking. Um, if you don't know what that means these days, a lot of kids, they got, they got different type of slang nowadays. They got words like riz, which basically means you know how to talk to a woman. You got words like cap, which means you're, you, you're lying about something. But when you look at the phrase, you won't catch me lacking, I went on the Urban Dictionary, and I'm going to read it verbatim to you all. Uh, the Urban Dictionary says the word lacking, it says in Chicago. <laughs> Do I got any Chicago people in the house? Okay, so you get it. You probably already know what I'm talking about. In Chicago, lacking means walking around without a gun. So if the ops, which means enemies, catch you lacking, that could be your last time living on earth. I'm, I'm helping somebody today. Somebody, somebody who's 75 just got a, a word from that. If an op, which is your rival or an enemy, catches you lacking, which means without your gun or without some type of weapon, they caught you lacking, which could lead to your demise. I'm going somewhere. Lacking a weapon, a weapon. When you look at this story with Jehoshaphat, they're outnumbered and outgunned. They don't have enough weapons to go around to wipe out this enemy that wants Jehoshaphat and all of his people dead. But they could rely on one weapon, and it's called worship. See, the enemy thought they caught them lacking. The enemy thought that they caught Jehoshaphat and his boys lacking, but they had no idea that we serve a God that puts his worship over everything. Listen, that's why all night and all day and all morning in heaven, the Bible says that they're just singing praises to Jesus. They're just singing worship to Jesus. They're just singing praise and worship because it inhabits the praises. He inhabits the praises of his people. I'm here today, people of God, to tell you the reason why lack cannot take over your life is because you're walking around with something called a weapon of mass destruction 
and it's called your worship. It's called your praise. It's called your tongue. So the enemy can never catch you lacking because you're always armed. You're always dangerous. You're always ready to take on the attacks of the enemy. So you may not have a physical gun or a physical knife, but I'm here today to tell you that you have something called a tongue. And as long as you've got a tongue, you can open up your mouth and jump up on your feet right now and give God praise and glory for what he's going to do in your life. That this thing is not unto death, that God is going to do some big things in this next chapter. This is still the year of expansion. God is about to expand some people's faith. He's going to expand your money. He's going to expand your trust. He's going to expand your relationship with Jesus. He's going to expand your relationship with your earthly family. He's going to expand some things. And it's all because you open up your mouth and you give God worship. Oh, I say we just give him worship for the next 10 seconds. Give him worship for the next 10 seconds. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. If you can speak in tongues, speak in that language that the Lord has given you. Because right now, God is about to break the back of a lack in this place. Your family has been in poverty for too long. You've been sick for too long. You've been struggling for too long. You've been dealing with a lack of trust for too long. You've been bound for too long. If you open up your mouth and give him praise, he's going to break the back of lack in your life. Thus saith the Lord. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a shout. And if you won't give him a shout for you, give him a shout for your children. Give him a shout for that cousin that's out there. Give him a shout for that grandmother out there. Give him a shout for your grandfather. Your, give him a shout for that uncle that needs him. Just give God a shout because I believe when we open up our mouth, we shake the gates of hell. When we open up the mouth, when you open up your mouth, we take back the keys from the enemy. So what he meant and drawed up for evil, he's turning around right now for your good. Someone open up your mouth in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor, tell him you won't catch me lacking. You won't catch me lacking. I'm always, I'm always armed and dangerous. <laughs> I'm always armed and dangerous. Always. Oh, hey, I, and guess what? You were born with it. You were born armed and dangerous. You were born called of God. You were, you were born for such a time as this that, that the Lord knew that you were going to be in this moment right now at the sound of my voice. And he knew that he was going to do something big right now in this next chapter of your life. As we go into this fall season, I believe some things are about to fall off your life. Oh, that was a word for somebody. As we're transitioning into fall, things are about to fall in your life depression must fall anxiety must fall your sickness must fall your temptations must fall your depression your anxiety your your temptations everything must fall as we go into this next season i don't know about you but it's the first day of october and i know a lot of people about to bring out that burnt orange and their pumpkins and all that stuff i'm bringing out the word of god i'm bringing out his presence because he's giving me access to it I'm, I'm a child of God, which means everything that my daddy has, he's got to give it to me. He's got to give it to me. Some things are about to fall off in your life. That generational curse that has followed your family is about to fall off in your life. That addiction that has plagued your family is about to fall off. That oppression that has been on your family's life is about to fall off. It's about to fall off. It's about to fall off. Oh, give them a give them a fall off praise in this place. Lord, I thank you for the things that are about to fall off that I didn't even know I had. The things I didn't even know I had, Lord, I thank you. That they're about to fall off. Lack must fall in your life. Your Lord and Savior wants to see you blessed and highly favored. Right there in James, he says, lacking nothing. 
you've got to learn to speak to the lack in your life you've got to learn to worship and you've got to learn to stop focusing on what you don't have pastor still always says all the time stop focusing on what you're going through just focus on where you're going to look at your neighbor and tell them you're going somewhere find somebody else tell them you're going somewhere you're going somewhere find somebody else tell them come on it's in the room it's in the room let them know tap them on the shoulder tell them hey you're going somewhere you're not what they said about you they're not you're not what they try to uh, uh, label you as you're you're not that you are something you are somebody because you're called of Jesus you're called of the most high God is about to do some big things in your life in this next chapter of your life come on lift those hands up to the heavens and thank God for the things that are falling off of your life, the things that are falling off of your husband's life, the things that are falling off of your wife's life, the things that are falling off of your children's life, the things that are about to fall off in this place. Open up your mouth. Ten more seconds. Open up your mouth. Come on, if this was the last chance that you ever had to lift up the name of Jesus, right now is your moment. We all know that tomorrow is not promised, but I tell you what, while I got right now, and while I got breath in my body, I'm going to throw my hand up, and I'm going to throw my head back, and I'm going to give God praise for the things that are falling off of my life. Let it fall off of my life. In the name of Jesus. Someone shout, in the name of Jesus. See, there's just something that happens when you say his name. Come on, there's no other name like the name Jesus. Someone shout Jesus in this place. Listen, sometimes when you're going through and you're struggling, if you don't have nothing else to say, just shout his name. Someone shout Jesus in this place. When you don't know what else to do, where else to turn, just shout his name. Someone shout Jesus. I remember when I was a kid and anytime something crazy would happen in our lives, my mother would shout his name. Someone shout Jesus. Jesus. With every hand lifted, we break the back of lack in this place. The spirit of poverty that has haunted our families be gone in the name of Jesus. At the sound of our voice, Lord, your word says that our voice can move mountains. This poverty, addiction, whatever it is that you're, that you're going through individually, it's falling off on today. It's falling off on today because we love you, because we thank you, and because we're going to remain consistent in worshiping you, Father. You're changing some things in our lives at this moment. Hallelujah. Pray in your heavenly language if you got it in this room. Pray, pray in your heavenly language. I believe that something is about to break in someone's life. I know I want to close, but I just feel like something is about to break in someone's life. We just, whoever that someone is, just open up your mouth and say, Lord, I surrender. Just say, Lord, I surrender. God, I give it. I give it all to you, Father. I can't do it on my own. I, I can't. I can't live like this anymore. Just give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. There was a song we sung as as kids and they would say give it to Jesus and they would say he can mend it which means he can bring it back together so the to the family that's broken right now I'm here today to tell you that he can mend it to the person that's broken in their spirit right now I'm here to tell you that he can mend it the person that has been stressed out and can't sleep at night Jesus can mend it he can mend it give it to Jesus on today now let's give God praise and honor in this place someone shout you won't catch me lacking you won't catch me lacking